Welcome, welcome to Town Meeting Television. I'm here today with Marina Brown, and we're gonna talk about vtleaks.org, but a little bit, uh, Marina's not, this is not the first time you've been in the studio. No. You've been here before, and you wanna just tell us what your history is with well, I've, what's brought you here? I stood for office three times with Liberty Union, and I was at this studio. Um, at least once for each of those uh, campaigns, though it all bleeds together. I believe I was in the audience uh, in 87 or 88, but when Herb Lewin ran for president. But I don't rightly remember. It's just a blurry past. Yeah. And you ran for lieutenant governor and L auditor? Lieutenant governor and then auditor twice. Yeah. And um, so you're likely in the archives here somewhere in that past, the Liberty Union Party, of course, is the party that Bernie Sanders started in and stands for, just like a quick rundown. What is well, Liberty? correction, it was not started by Liberty, uh, by Bernie Sanders. Oh, I know, he, but he first ran as a Liberty Yes, Union he was candidate. one of the peop yeah. early members. Um, it's, it's Vermont's Socialist Party. It was, um, it's an anti-war party. It's the sister party to the Peace and Freedom Party in California. It's been to a great extent, Liberty Union is what opened up the ballot access in Vermont to third parties and to some extent even the Democratic Party. Uh -huh. um, interesting. I didn't realize it was a Vermont only party. That's correct. It's yeah. Vermont only, though you could say that the, the Peace and Freedom Party was almost the same party, but it's not. Yeah. It's it, That's California. Yeah. And what brings you, I mean, what inspired you to get involved in that? What's your... Well, I, in, in 87, 88, I was on Church Street getting signatures to get Herb Lewin on the ballot. And I, I came back to Vermont in 2011 and uh, shambled down Western Avenue in Brattleboro and s talked to Peter, Peter Diamondstone again, and he looped me into doing, to be involved again. And this is because you believe in? Yes, I'm a socialist. Socialist. And so, socialist, I'm sort of at the edge of socialist and anarchist, but uh -huh. that's where I stand. So you believe in a better world, if possible. I believe in a world where the resources should be shared equitably, not controlled for the profits of the few. And there's many ideologies that will, that agree with that. Yeah, great, thanks. This is just a little bit about who you are. I mean, you reached out to us um, recently to ask for the CCTV board meeting minutes um, to add to vtleaks.org. And I was kind of curious about that, so I asked you to come in and do a show, and maybe we'll bring up, um, I don't have the TV on here, but we're gonna bring up the uh, website so we can take a look at it. Tell us, what is vtleaks.org? Well, when I came to Vermont, I was a little bit shocked by the lack of transparency. And what vtleaks was designed to do was to, incre to push for more transparency in Vermont. There's lots of cutouts in the public records law, and many little towns are not even transparent to the extent that the law requires them to be, and that's what VT Leaks was about. I s had set up infrastructure to allow for people to anonymously submit um, leaks after having that up for a few years and no one using it. Is now it's just public records requests, and I uh, at requested your board minutes because I was curious how does how does CCTV work? I mean I've been there, but I don't know how it works, so I asked you for the minutes to post, mm -hmm. and that's what we do. The latest leaks were, latest public records requests I did were to three school districts regarding COVID policies, and how are people getting fired because they got sick? I didn't know because I was hearing stories of people of teachers and people working at the schools being very sick all the time with respiratory stuff, COVID or not. And it's like, wait a second, this doesn't sound right. So I 
I um, submitted public records requests to St. Johnsbury School, the Orleans School District, the North and South one, and, and Canaan. As of yet, only the St. Johnsbury School District has fully complied to my request. I expect, in all fairness to uh, North Country uh, Supervisory Union, I expect that their um, documents are in my mailbox when I get back home, no. so I won't go after them, but Lakes, Lake County School, School Supervisory Union and Canaan, they have not responded to me, so they will be getting certified letters, and if they don't respond to the certified letters, then, well, I'm going to have to find a lawyer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we have, a, we have an idea of a robust uh, government infrastructure that is built to take care of people. I mean, sort of a liberal notion that we have this infrastructure. And so, you know, certainly I, I'll admit, like, when I get a request and I'm like, well, why, why would this need to be? Well, you were, it was posted, and, yeah. and so I asked yeah. for it. And yeah. now, now you kind of committed that you're going to be posting it to your website from there on, and yeah. it'll be great. Yeah. So that, the, like I call the I call these folks like civic heroes, mm. folks that are working at the margins of political of like political infrastructures. Um, do you do you see yourself as sort of a civic hero in developing this website? I see myself as as an annoyance, uh -huh. <laughs> and and uh, I'm going to fail at my goal. But I was hoping to be the most prolific uh, public records requester in Vermont, but I'm not going to make that this Ooh. year. Who, who do you think is? Who's got you? Well, I won't mention names, but there's a person in in um, in Burlington who hits the police departments and mm -hmm. who is renowned for them. I think he has he has me beat. I asked him to be on the VT Leaks team, but he was not interested. Oh, he he's, he does it independently. He does it independently. Yeah. Does he post those? Uh, mostly the stuff that he does is at muck, muckrake.org, which oh, okay. is another, it's uh, muck, muck, muck rock, muckrake is infrastructure for people to do leaks. I probably should use it, but I, I'm used to doing my requests um, independently on my own. Now, VT Leaks is reminiscent of WikiLeaks. That's the inspiration. So uh, talk a little bit for folks who don't know what WikiLeaks Well, WikiLeaks was a hacker's cooperative that I would say it went wrong in the last few years, but it, what it would do is it would take, accept leaks from public, from the hackers groups, from whistleblowers, and supposedly anonymize it so that people could read stuff. I mean, um, Chelsea Manning released um, the cable gate to WikiLeaks. The successor organization to WikiLeaks is called DDO Secrets, which is run by a fantastic team of many of the people that were thrown to the wayside by WikiLeaks. I don't know if people really know, um, the founder of WikiLeaks seems to uh, Julian Assange seems to have taken somewhat of a right-wing turn in the last few years, and the way he ran uh, WikiLeaks alienated a lot of people. Yeah. Now, also being outside the governor, government, sort of outside the infrastructure, like the recognized known infrastructure, do you have accountability structures? Do you have... We had in intended on doing that, but as I wasn't able to gather many people. It's been just me until about a month ago. We, we've we worked with um, Robert Appel. He's helped, but he, he didn't join the organization. We have some local activists who probably don't want to be named who've, who've decided to join, and hopefully I can step away from this project at some point and let and, them do it. And do you have, um, so if we look at it, um, we, Jordan, I don't know if we can bring that up on the TV out here the, um, and sort of get a sense of what these, um, what's on vtleaks.org and where do you get, without again naming names, where do you get sources? Well, cl click on the uh, documents obtained. That's the interesting, uh, interesting part of the website, really. 
Um, in the beginning, we were posting every bit of money that went in, but as, as right now, the only interesting part would be me paying the the so we, domain registration every every uh, uh, one to three years. Yeah. So here we have Anderson Farm. Yeah, the Patriot Anderson Front. Andersonville Farm was a very interesting um, public records request because the the Vermont State Police ignored me and they stonewalled me at every every turn. The first uh, documents they sent me were almost entirely blacked out, and the Andersonville Farm incident was out near um, between Glover and Craftsbury, and it involved um, Nazi graffiti on a barn, and there was um, it's I there was uh, yeah, racist spray painting. and there was yeah. racist graffiti put on the road yeah. in front of people's houses that actually wasn't covered in the police reports but because this was targeted racist harassment i wanted to know about that and the police would not release information until i got uh, robert appel to I think it, he actually wrote them a letter. I'm not sure if it was a CC or something like that, but it took a long time to get the the um, reports, and even the rep final report I got was highly redacted, and I don't know why. Yeah. I'm assuming they think it was miners that did the racist graffiti, but I don't really think it's a great idea to... Re to Protect? I don't think if, if young people are involved with, with racist um, activities, I think there's a line where we don't protect them. Mm -hmm. I've worked with a number of anti-fascist collectives, and when they protect young people because they might change their minds, but when people get to a certain level, I don't, I don't think they should be protected. Like there was an incident, I think it was a... I think it was a group called The Base, and they were organized by a 14-year-old out of Finland, I believe, and a friend of mine exposed them, and they did, they did expose their, their, their identities because mm -hmm. um, The Base is such a violent group. Mm -hmm. So it seems like part of the motivation is a sort of general protection of uh, those who are in a vulnerable position. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I there's one. Of, there was an incident of uh, a gay bashing. I think it happened in Underhill or Jericho. That's also on the site, and that was one of the times that I was happily surprised by the state police because they could not release the give me the full unredacted report quickly enough. I mean, I, they didn't even redact the victim of the gay bashing's name, and I had to spend the time redacting the victim's name because I'm not gonna release the yeah. name of a gay bashing victim. Yeah. But I was happy to release the name of the suspect. Uh -huh. Very happy. Yeah. So, I mean, what do you think the resistance is? Why? I don't know. I, what I've noticed is that the racist events that happened before Trump was elected out in the Northeast Kingdom, I had terrible problems getting reports, re police reports regarding those. They're very resistant. I don't know. I have my suspicions, but yeah. whether it was minors, whether possibly somebody the police knew was involved, but I don't know. I'm not going to. I mean, when you reached out to me, I'm, I'm like, yes, excellent. <laughs> because one, I, you know, I appreciate the ability to examine our practices and I think you know that I said oh I gotta go back and check and make sure I don't have editable links um, to information that shouldn't be in the minutes right so there's there's making sure that our practices going forward and and are are consistent with open meeting law as we should be and um, certainly want to have you know we're open and you know want folks to be able to understand what's going on here um, there is that, um, the suspicion of, again, I said like, you know, something that's not, that's extra governmental, that's outside 
the systems of power that make people uncomfortable or like you know what's what's behind this and then there's like the resistance that makes you wonder is there some sort of collusion so i just wonder if you talk about if you've run into those two different kinds of oh, oh i mean i haven't run into people being suspicious of uh of someone external mostly it's oh great you've given us a whole lot of work to do mm -hmm. and i i try to be nice to people even organizations i don't i'm not fans of i'm not fans of the prison systems or n not a big fan of the police but i try to be polite to the poor poor person whose job is to go through tons and tons of documents for um my releases one thing i did want to mention of an interesting leak that i did not do is there is there is a group called the american i believe american academy of pediatricians mm -hmm. which is a forgive me if i'm getting it wrong but it's a right wing group that's that's counter to the mainstream american college of pediatricians mm, okay. it's a right wing group that f uh, focuses on anti gay anti trans pro family um narrative and they had all their documents on an open Google Drive and everything was dumped there including their QuickBooks including <gasps> their membership lists. Oh. So since some organization I requested earlier had to ask me to redact documents, maybe you want, don't want to be falling in the same pitfall as mm -hmm. as they did. Not that I would put CCTV in the same category, yeah, but a lot. And so when you see that, is that a chance to you're like Let's pull all those. Oh yeah, I, I look. I look at it, and I was um, one of the interesting things about the ACPED leak is um, is that um, ADP payroll, which has a policy against hate, provides this SPLC um, designated hate group as a client. I'm sure that ADP for did. folks who don't know, SPLC is the Southern Poverty Law Center, and they track hate groups and. Um, hate crimes and hate organizations around the country. Yes, and, and ADP, which is the, one of the world's largest payroll companies, was providing payroll services for an SPLC designated hate group. Great, interesting. So there's some, so, and tell us a little bit there in terms of the goals that you're trying to sp speak a little bit more about what you're trying to do. What, what, what I do is is if I see something that doesn't smell right, I, I do a lot of, st I, I hit the police a lot about hate groups, about hate crimes. Um, the Burlington Police Department has heard about me re repeatedly about the, about Patriot Front who's annoying Nazi group who has a member in Enosburg Falls who recently got arrested for carrying a torch at um, Charlottesville. Mm -hmm. uh, I've requested them information about that. The anti-trans hate group, the LGB Alliance that caused a good deal of consternation around pride and the uh, outright truck pull. I. Are these the folks, the stickering folks? Yeah, they're okay. the they're the people who are, who, who are littering up the phone post all over the place. Uh -huh. um, I did some public records requests regar regarding the um, supposed um, assault on Fred Sargent, and that the, if you want to hear the unredacted police, re well, very slightly redacted by the police police reports, they're on. They, you can go to VT you can go to VT or and see those there. Um, or do you, I mean, and maybe this is getting in the technicalities of this, but is this backed up to someplace like Internet Archives? Or? Um, it's backed up locally, and yeah. I probably should hit go to Internet Archive to uh, do it. When I get home, I'll tell Internet Archive to back it up. Yeah. Most of the website is actually backed up on uh, GitHub, but since I've been getting very large media, I have not been able to back all that up on GitHub. Yeah. 
So in the realm, we've been having, I mean, you, you mentioned the anti-trans um, groups and the LGB group that was doing the stickering work. There was recently a, there, a show here uh, with some folks who came in mm -hmm. from that organization and mm -hmm. spoke, and it, it generated a big conversation here around free speech. And, you know, what is this organization supporting when we give uh, a voice to folks that are speaking hateful or untrue or hurtful, um, you know, sort of in that realm of, um, of speech? Well, I'll be honest that it was that controversy that generated the, the um, request that I sent to you because I was saying, how do, thi how, how do things work? How do things work at CCDV? I want to see the discussion about, um, about plat platforming uh, this type of a group. Yep. I'm, I sound like a broken record when I deal with free speech. I stand very strongly for free speech, however, there are limits. The International Criminal T Tribunal on Rwanda uh, prosecuted a radio station for fomenting the Rwandan genocide. And the case, uh, the Radio Rwanda case, even examined um, Ohio versus um, Brandon, Brandenburg versus Ohio. Okay. Brandenburg versus Ohio was when a Klansman was arrested for um, violent speech. Yeah. And the ICTR said in their discussion that even Brandenburg is moot on what constitutes inciting imminent violence. Does it mean tomorrow? Brandenburg doesn't say. Does it mean if I put this out in a, in a month, there's going to be violence in a year, in 10 years? Brandenburg doesn't talk about that. Yeah. The Rwanda, Radio Rwanda case has not been used as a precedent very much, but it still stands in international law. And I would propose that the anti-trans speech that is being put out nowadays steps over that line in that you see the legal definition of genocide does not include gender identity. However, it should. The Holocaust Museum says, yes, this movement against trans people is genocidal. So I will take them at their word rather than the antiquated legal definitions of genocide. And I would posit that most of the anti-trans speech that you will see, like the stuff at CPAC, the stuff that Matt Walsh did um, saying... CPAC, we, tell me what CPAC, CPAC is. CPAC is the Conservative Political okay. Action Committee. Yep, yep. And one of the people at this committee said we have to eradicate transgenderism. Yeah. He, he took a step back and said, no, we just mean transgenderism. We don't mean transgender people. Mm -hmm. But they're clearly working with governments like the Viktor Orban in Hungary, which has essentially waged war on LGBT people, not just uh, uh, trans people. And I'm curious about um, Mr. Felker, how he can separate what's happening in, in Hungary and Poland to gay people as well as trans people when he aligns himself with these anti-gender ideology people that will come for him in the, in the future. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting, and it's it's. Thanks for sharing that, because as our staff is talking about that, and those aren't part of the board minutes, because we don't keep track of our staff minutes in that same open meeting law way. Um, as our staff wrestles with that, I think it'll, we'll start to see that in some of our policy conversations going forward. Yeah, take take the time. It's hard, very hard to find the ICTR uh, decision and discussion, but it's if you find it, it's worth noting and I'll see if I can find it and I'll yeah. I'll post a copy to uh, VT Leaks yeah. and send you a link. Yeah. We've long been, you know, the organization here has long held the idea that, you know, you counter bad speech with more speech. And um, I think folks are wondering 
you know, what are the limits on that? If, if speech infringes on freedoms of others or speech infringes on the well-being of others, is that still free speech? I mean, it's America, the United States is an outlier in its ideas of free speech. Mm -hmm. Please don't make me out to be a supporter of the right-wing government in Poland, but I'll use Poland as, a, as an example. Poland has had a long history of religious wars and religious intolerance causing death and destruction. And there are limits on stepping on religion. I don't really approve of that, but I understand why Poland would say, no, we don't have public stuff that will lead to bloodshed. Likewise, in, in, in France with uh, Charlie Hebdo, it was terrible what happened to those magazine people. But do you allow people to step on, on other people's religion to the extent that they're going to commit violence? I think there needs to be a more nuanced discussion of, of speech. And I'm a big supporter of very open stuff, but I do not want to see people getting hurt. Yep. And when people are using speech not to honestly discuss a topic, but to further harm against other people, I think that's where you draw the line. Yep, that's really helpful for us to think about, and I look forward to sharing your words with staff as well. Um, Back to vtleaks.org. I'm not sure if there's anything more that you want to point out. Well, there's, I mean, that. look at the, I, I don't have it in front of me, so it's hard for me yeah. to do it. I don't have a good memory. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah the Mark That's Clark, that was the gay bashing thing. Um, Patriot Front. Yeah. So. And uh, then the Essex High School uh, Gender Queer Book Challenge. Here's an example of where VT Leaks gets pretty nasty. Mm. If somebody could click on the book challenge part, what I, what I did is I heard about the debate about having... If you could click on the book challenge there where it says Essex High School, um, you click on that window and then just click on, yeah, there you yes. go. Yes. So the principal of the high school seemed very upset when I hit her with this public records request. But when it was clear I was on the high, the high school side about keeping books published, she gave a whole lot of information. What was interesting is that the two different parties had reported the school for having this teen uh, sexuality, gender queer book, Maya Kobabe's book, in the library. One of them, I don't even know if he's a, an Essex uh, resident, yeah. but there was the, one of them obviously was, yeah. and when when I dug into it, apparently the police had been notified, so I hit the Essex police. The police refused to give me the full information because they said they were protecting their source. Uh -huh. And But in one of the leaks, there was converse, conversation between the Essex police department and Sarah George's office. And I hit Sarah George's office, who Gave me, she promptly gave me everything. Yeah. She didn't give me the name of the person. However, there's something called metadata. And in the metadata of the PDF that was created for to call the police on a book was the name of the person who did the leak. I'm not going to release that name on CCTV. However, go to vtleaks.org. It's in the metadata, and I've stripped the metadata for you. Likewise, with leaks, it's if people are trying to leak information and not have their identity released by leaking that, it's very important to strip the metadata, uh -huh. which our anti-LGBT complainant did not do. Uh -huh. Yeah. So... That's that's VT leaks getting nasty because I posted his name. Is yeah. the, uh, the the metadata I stripped yeah. it. It's there. Yeah. So Marina, thanks for coming in today. Appreciate um, you sharing with us what you're doing and what you're up to, and um, 
hopefully we'll see you again and hear more from you in the future. And Very for good. those who are at home watching, thank you for watching. And remember, you don't need to just watch TV. You can come and join us and make your own TV. So if you have something that you want to say um, or something you want to add to the conversation, we welcome you to contact us at maketv.org. Make TV at cctv.org. Thanks so much, and we're out.